Priya. She is a genetics major and public health and health and society minor in her senior year. She considers herself obsessed with meeting new people and loves advocating for global health care change. Let's all put our hands together. This is Priya. Every day, starting from my freshman year in high school, I'd wake up and I'd put on my armor. I'd spend time concealing dark circles under my eyes, wrinkle my hair into a do that somehow eliminates frizz, smear lipstick into a perfect pout before stomping out into the world. There's little that can stop me when I have my armor on. Not a late bus, poor weather, I never need to-do list. In my armor, I'm unstoppable, ready to address any challenges that come my way. But no set of armor is perfect. There are those spots of vulnerability, that deep crack in the foundation covered over after years of experience and leadership. But just because I forgot there was a chink in the armor doesn't mean it wasn't there. For years, my armor served me well. It gave me the confidence to be the first to speak in class, the drive to join and run student organizations, the ability to make friends with complete strangers. In my armor, I look and felt polished, strong, unstoppable. So much so that in my sophomore year of college, I was asked to apply to run my own Model United Nations conference. Could not explain to you how excited I was. It was my dream ever since I was a delegate in those conferences to run my own. And at that moment, I thought, I made it. The never ending to-do list, the sleepless nights, every single part of it was worth it. Nothing could bring me down. Nothing except the silence that came during the interview of my dreams. The English language has 171,476 words. 171,000 words that can be used to describe love, happiness, joy, anger. It took less than a dozen words to break apart every piece of armor I had. People think you're unlikable. How are you going to fix that? That is what I was asked. Still reeling, I was hit by a series of biting adjectives. Underqualified, bossy, bitchy, each one gouging at that delicate underbelly I never knew I had, letting doubt and fear seep in. And the thing about doubt is that it eats at you from the inside out. Less than a dozen words corroding my excitement, turning my hopes and dreams into a rusted, mangled sculpture of hurt and hatred. Sitting in that room, I choked out a response. Uh, of course, if I was chosen, I'd work harder. I'd be less bossy. I'd be better. I'd be more likable. And as I left, I wondered, why do being called unlikable hurt so much? For many people in this room, this may not be a big question, but it was for me. Because ever since we've been kids, we've been told to be ourselves. But if by being myself, I'm unlikable, then where do I go from there? Look me in my eyes and tell me that I would have been called unlikable if I had been a man. Because when women like us try to you know, lead, we're pushy. And why, when we try to motivate, we're arrogant. Looking back, it seems so simple. I should have just let it go. The question was you know, unfair. The shocked faces of the others in the room clearly showed me that. And when I got that phone call offering me the role of my dreams, I should have been happy to accept. But the words, I accept, were lodged deep in my throat. I swallowed that vulnerability. I was going to be cool, but not too cool. Attractive, but not distracting. Fun, but not too fun that it'd be distracting. Layer upon layer, this armor began too heavy to carry. Draped across my shoulders, the weight of this conflicting expectations began to engulf me. And in my quest to become likable, I covered too much of who I was. I'd always thought of myself as an empowered woman. It's the first to tell my friends to drop their deadbeat boyfriends, that others' opinions of you didn't matter. So why was it suddenly so hard to take my own advice? And that is when I realized it was me that had worked hard for years to get to this position, to get the job of my dreams. Why did I suddenly think that I had to sacrifice every single piece of me to become that? In the mirror, I stripped off each layer, layer upon layer, preconceptions and misconceptions, until the only thing left in that mirror was me. 
And that is when I realized that was enough, just being unapologetically me. Because when women like us try to motivate, we're building community. And when we say strong and sturdy in crisis, we're getting things done. And when we try to be better than our predecessors, we're building our legacy. And when we do all of the above, we're fierce. Because when <laughs> every day I wake up and I put on my armor, a bright lipstick, a cute outfit, a will to lead, a passion to be better than before. But the difference is, is this armor doesn't protect me. This armor is me. Woo!